Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Dev Diary interview. I am your host, Samson, and today we are joined by Philip La, Director of Product at Roboto Games. Uh, we're going to give you a update on what's going on with Project Storm, as well as give you some more teasers. But first, uh, Philip, I think you have something to share about digital collectibles. Yeah, th thanks for having me today. Excited to chat. Yeah, we uh, we noticed a lot of people asking about digital collectibles and, and assets and uh, in our Discord and, and during our uh, streams playing some other survival crafting games. And so our general take on it, just to share with the community, is you know we're building a survival crafting game first. We're building it for players who love the, these types of games, who love the Valheims, V Risings, Core Keepers, R uh, Return to Moria, all these games, people who really just want to play these games. And um, you know, if people are primarily here, with the interest of digital collectibles, uh, you know things like that you can trade, like Counter Strike skins on on Steam, and are not necessarily a survival crafting game fan. I am, you know, it's unfortunate to say that this is not the right community for you. Um, and for us, it's important to just be transparent about that. You know, we're not building the game to be around digital collectibles. We're building it for survival crafting game players who love, you know, exploring, foraging going across an open world, fighting new things. Um, and so, yeah, if, if people are here primarily for digital collectibles and that's what you're waiting for, then, you know, you, it's probably just not the right place for you. Um, you know, otherwise, obviously, we welcome everyone to continue on this journey with us as we, we create a new, you know, open world survival craft experience with epic storms and a unique graphic novel art style and, and all the things we'll talk more about today. Um, and that should be really fun to play. And so if you're here for that, then you're in the right place. Um, but if you're just here for collectibles and digital assets, then this is probably not the right place for you. I love that you hinted at stuff such as the storms and the graphic style, and I can't wait to dive into that. So I guess I'll ask first is uh, this game is obviously hinted as Project Storm. Uh, what is the significance of these storms in the game? What are they about? What do they do? So on our website, if you go to robotogames.com, uh, you'll see a lot of these storms, uh, you know, in, in some of our, uh, you know, early art. And, you know, I don't want to reveal too much. A lot of it is still in development. A lot of it's still in design. Uh, but at a high level, you know, when you think of survival crafting games, there are these dangers. A lot of times there's, you know, enemies, there's, you know, hunger, there's thirst, there's sanity, there's tons of things that can uh, hurt you and things you have to survive against. And Storms is such a natural fit within this genre because, you know, it's a natural disaster. It, it causes a lot of issues, chaos. Um, and so you can imagine all the different challenges of surviving and also having to deal with storms. Um, you know, there might be some risk reward type gameplay that we're thinking about, you know, dealing with storms given their nature uh, where, you know, maybe you aren't necessarily always trying to avoid them. Maybe there's some advantages they bring too. Uh, and, you know, with our game, you know, we're in the, we're in kind of the fantasy side of things. And so uh, these are magical storms that we are, we are looking at them as. So they're not, you know, purely realistic storms that have only the properties of, of a real storm in real life. You know, there's a fantasy world and, and with magical storms. So, you know, there's just a lot of directions we can go with, um, uh, with what these storms can do uh, and how you can interact with them. Awesome. That's so exciting. The storms align with survival, not just as a threat, but also could be a benefit. Could be, could be. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we know, uh, you know, the survival crafting counts. So we talk to players in, who play survival crafting games all the time. And, you know, they, uh, one thing they're concerned about when they think of, you know, benefits is like, they don't want the game to be too easy. Um, but they also don't want it to be, you know, too frustratingly hard. And so, you know, storms, we also want it to fit within that spectrum of, you know, what makes the game challenging, but not tedious, right? And so uh, it should have kind of a mix of, of things that might be a part of it. So that's part of the thinking as well. Cool. That sounds so exciting. I can't yeah. wait to uh, check out what you guys have been cooking up the whole time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask a little bit about the art style. Uh, you described it as a graphic art style. Uh, what are some unique inspirations with going with that art style compared to like maybe something realistic or something uh, very cartoony and fantasy? Yeah. So uh, if you look at some of our, our 
older art and we shared some of that on, on social media, you know, we were top down before we were low poly, um, styles, uh, and, you know, this is just part of our, our culture of being very kind of player informed and, and driven in, in how we develop the game. And so we did a lot of research and surveys and testing with players on different art styles, you know, many, many, many months ago. Um, and we tested, I think, eight, nine different styles uh, with survival crafting players. And we ended up finding that the tune style compared to many of the other styles you mentioned uh, was the most exciting and interesting for them uh, for our style of game. Um, and then from there, we further refined it into this unique graphic novel type style uh, that we continue to test and see a lot of really good feedback from uh, with, with players. And so we continue to refine that. Uh, there's a bit of a, a Franco-Belgian influence. Uh, some of the artists out there like uh, Mobius and uh, Mezier and a bit, of, a bit of Studio Ghibli too, which everyone loves. Um, and uh, so all of those are, are some influences. Uh, Blue Turtle Design is an illustrator out there. It also has some really cool art that uh, we've looked at that's a bit of an inspiration as well. So uh, a lot of different things going into it, but you know, ultimately trying to create a unique art style that's also very engaging and you know, exciting for survival crafting players and a bit different than a lot of the ones out there that are more realistic 3D style. And, and so that kind of sets us apart. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really exciting. You're right. There aren't too many of these comic book style survival crafting games. So having this kind of style and going with it really helps you stand out. I want to do some uh, questions from the community. Uh, one cool. question we have is about the multiplayer. So mm -hmm. will Project Storm be a solely cooperative experience or will there be some PvP elements in the sense of maybe looting and combat uh, with other players? Yeah, yeah. Multiplayer is super important to us as a company. So, you know, our motto is uh, good alone, great together. So obviously solo play is going to be there, but where the magic really happens is playing with friends as well and, and experiencing it together and working uh, with with each other to accomplish, you know, shared goals. And so, uh, yeah, co-op is going to be the big focus for us. Um, we're definitely going to be figuring out what are the best ways to play with your friends, how to make sure that's fun, how there can be interesting ways to work together and collaborate for all different types of people, not just, you know, people who love combat, people who love foraging, how they can uh, play together and have a great time and, uh, and help each other. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a big part of the, the core game. And then PvP is something we are, are definitely open to as well. Um, and we've talked to a lot of players about it uh, in, in the survival crafting space. Uh, it's TBD on exactly how we'll do it. But, you know, more than likely, if we, if we do do it, you know, it might come a bit later. Uh, but it would be something that's more optional, potentially. Um, that, you know, for the people who, you know, PvPs can be a bit hardcore and intense. And, you know, some people don't enjoy that part as much. So making it required would really change kind of the vibes and how the game works. And so we might have it as kind of more of an optional part of the game where you can go into, you know, a lot of games have more PVP type servers or, or modes or things like that. So but that's what we've thought about, but nothing's really uh, been, been nailed down in that area, but co-op is hundred percent the focus. Um, and then, uh, uh, we'll go from there and initially it'll just be, you know, you can work with your friends to go through the crafting loop together and fight bosses and, you know, go across the, across the game. Cool. Awesome. That's exciting. How many people are developing the game and how long has development been in the process? Yeah. So our team's uh, around 23 ish people now, you know, uh, we're still hiring and, um, and potentially growing a bit more. Uh, and we've been building the game for about 15 months. Uh, so it's been, you know, some time and we've made a lot of good progress. Uh, but we're still really early. Um, you know, good games take a long time to, to build. And, you know, especially with all the ambitions we have for this game and all the features we want to add in, uh, it's, it's going to take a while. Uh, and, you know, we have all the, you know, typical disciplines in a game studio, engineering, design, UX, UI. Uh, product, obviously myself, um, operations, art, animation, all of that. Uh, but one thing that's a bit more unique that for a studio our size that you don't see as often is a user researcher. And so, you know, that's why you've heard me mention so many times that we, we 
talk to and really try to listen to the community to see what is actually going to work and be exciting for them to play this game. And so our, our full-time user researcher is just thinking about this all day, really being the representative for players um, so that we have that feedback. Because, you know, I think one of the dangers of, of game design and game development is we all have our own preferences, right? You know, I love a certain type of game. Kurt likes a certain type, you know, John, our game designer, likes a certain type, and we all have some preferences. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, we want to build this game for, you know, survival crafting players that are playing this every day and, and make sure that we, we check our biases and all that as well against the research. That's awesome. It sounds like you guys have a system to build a game that's a careful balance of not only your own passions, but the the passions of the players as well. Yeah, and it's always a, a hard balance because obviously we have a vision um, and kind of a design vision and product vision for what the game uh, we want to create. But that needs to be balanced with, you know, ultimately what people actually enjoy playing. So that's kind of the, the art of it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. It sounds like things are going along smoothly then. I know you said you are early in the development uh, in the grand scheme of things, but I do have to ask what mechanics are going to be available at launch or are you planning to launch with? Yes, so still early, but you know, I think uh we will definitely have all the typical uh open world survival crafting game mechanics at launch uh exploring foraging crafting combat uh building structures you know all these core kind of mechanics that people would expect out of this type of game are going to be there um and then on top of that is going to be where things get a you know a lot more interesting and different than potentially other games and with with things like storms and you know unique things you do with those and how they affect you know each of those features, how they affect crafting, how they affect combat. So storms, uh, we ideally wanted to affect everything as a part of the game, uh, but in ways that make sense and not just kind of tacked on. Um, it should feel organic. Um, and we, we are, you know, a relatively small team, so we have to be careful around scope. You know, we'd love to add in all the different ways to, you know, traverse and to interact and uh, all the details um, involved with, you know, enemies, you know, fighting each other, all of those. Uh, but we have to be careful, um, with, with scope. Um, so we'll have to figure out, you know, what we actually, we can actually fit in with the time we have and the resources we have, um, and be very, uh, focused on what's going to be the most impactful and what would be the most value adding for, for the player's experience. Um, so yeah, that's kind of initially what we're thinking in terms of, what might be around when when it launches do you have any idea of any other modes that you've been thinking of adding to the game uh not really uh so you know one uh you know the the core game is is the big focus right now uh you know pvp might be something that that's for the future uh you know modding is something we've been thinking a lot about and, and looking to learn more about as well in terms of how players can contribute to different game modes too uh, and uh, and create some unique experiences uh, as you know we focus on being very player uh, uh, player informed and, and driven with how the game evolves. Um, so maybe more to the future, but yeah, focus now is just the core core game mode primarily. Awesome. Uh, I want to ask a little bit about the actual crafting system of the game. Uh, what is it going to be like, and how in depth is it? Yeah, we we definitely want a lot want to add a lot of depth to the craft crafting system uh, and make it super interesting uh, games. We have liked the crafting systems for include, you know, some of, some of the survival crafting games like Valheim and core keeper. Um, and we just want to make sure it's exciting for people to, to craft new structures and equipment. You know, I'm personally uh, working on the crafting tree. And so we'll definitely be looking for unique ideas to incorporate from the community. I think, you know, some of the, the games uh, out there that I've played that um, I found the most excitement around was one, you know, you can craft something that might be a bit more quirky and a bit different than, you know, your standard iron sword. Uh, I know in core keeper, they have, um, you know, whole larva section and you can craft, I think like, uh, you know, a, a body that looks like a little worm. Uh, so uh, a, a body armor. And so things like that are just kind of, quirky and interesting um so that's definitely things uh, i'm thinking about as as i work on the crafting tree and what could be some interesting things that people will 
find whimsical to to craft and play with. Oh, okay, so it's not necessarily yeah. just the uh, j- just stuff to survive your character. It's also fun stuff, whimsical stuff, like you said. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's definitely something I, w- I would love to to incorporate more into the game as well. You know, obviously you got to get the basic stuff to survive, but then there's uh, you know, within a lot of these open world sur- uh, survival crafting games, there's, you know, the survive phase of the game where you're just trying to, you know, make sure you're fed, make sure, you know, you're not freezing to death, whatever it is. Um, and then there's a the thrive where you're like, okay, now I'm like really getting strong and, you know, food's not an issue. I'm trying to beat this next boss now and I got some cool stuff. So we want to make sure those phases are all interesting. So far, this sounds super exciting. I would love to get my hands on it soon. I want to ask... Are there going to be like alpha betas for this game? And if there is, how can I get involved? Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be doing play tests. Uh, TBD on when they are, uh, hopefully next year, uh, you know, in the first half. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to look to our community um, and specifically people who play a lot of survival uh, crafting games and get their opinions on it. Uh, so yeah, definitely encourage people to sign up to our mailing list on our website, which is going to be primarily where we look for people to you know to to test out our game and and give feedback and shape what it can be um as well as joining our discord you know i'm i'm in there uh and dropping in asking questions here and there so definitely getting feedback there is helpful in informing you know how things evolve uh and so yeah just keeping up with with all of our channels you know you'll definitely see the opportunity to to test the game and try it out and uh and yeah, excited to just get that feedback from everyone. Awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Links to the Discord and all the, the socials and website are all in the description below. Uh, so make sure to get connected there. Philip, it's been awesome having you on Dev Diaries to talk a little bit more about Project Storm. And I can't wait to hear more. Awesome. Thanks so much, Samson. And uh, yeah, excited to share more as, as we put a lot more of it together. Um, and thanks to the community for continuing to, to follow us and uh, give us feedback and, and keep up with all the updates. Well, see you later, everybody, at the next Dev Diary. Samson and Philip signing off. Bye.